joining me again. It's a pleasure to have you. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to have a look at Dragon's NVA T34 85M from the 135th scale NAM series. This is kit number 3318. So, first question is going to be what is a T34 85M or a, a mic model, as I'm probably going to refer to it from here on? What the mic model is, is essentially a mod 1969. So if you're familiar with Dragon's T3476 series, you've got the 1940, 1941, 1943. To continue that naming scheme, this would be the mod 1969. It's got night driving equipment, improved radio, um, little details to it to improve its efficiency in combat. No major changes, it's not been up armored or anything. If you're a World of Tanks player, um, then you'll be thinking that it's got this massive plate welded to the front. Uh, not, not so, that was one of the 1940 T-34-76s that had that. This is a, a lot more straightforward. And also for the eagle-eyed among you looking at the box art, You'll notice it does have T54 slash 55 uh, road wheels as opposed to the older ones. To show you the older ones, I've got some here. The tan colored one is from a T34 76, if the autofocus will cooperate. And the green one is from the T34 85 Berlin kit which I'm working on just now. So you can see a visible difference in the way that those are laid out. This is one of the first T3485 kits, or one of the first T34 kits, sorry, that Dragon did. My autofocus isn't behaving. Quite frustrating, I apologize. I'll try and keep on top of it. Um, it was one of the first T34 kits that Dragon did. The copyright says 1997. I, I regrettably don't remember offhand when this kit was made, but I do know that the plastic we're going to be taking a look at does form the basis for the bulk of the T-34 line, including the Mod 1941 that I showed you a few months back and the premium T-3485, which I hope to be showing you in the future. So we're going to move the box art as well as the extra bit of sprue that was holding it up and we're going to grab our instructions and see what's going on. So, uh, typical Dragon, especially with the older ones, it's a, a black and white or blue black and white fold out sheet. It does show us quite a lot of unused parts here. Uh, there's a cupola there, there's some hatches and just little detail parts around here. There's a machine gun up here that we don't use and some more towing cleats. You can see the newer style road wheels as well, as well as the, the tracks that the kit does have. So take a quick look at the instructions. It's hobby color, Mr. Color. Uh, call outs here, so green is the appropriate color. It should be 4BO pretty much no matter what you're doing though. And as you can see, the instructions are of the fold out type. It's a two part exhaust. Looks like it's not slide molded or anything like that. So the instructions are what you would expect. They look relatively clear. I've not had a chance to check them for accuracy, but if I do notice anything, I'll let you know. We've got a few different colors that we can do it. We can do it the Croatian National Guard down here. We can do it as the JNA from Croatia, 91. Somali Army from 1978. And then the Angolian army featured in Africa in 1980. And then finally, as advertised, the North Vietnamese army from the Vietnam War. 
and that's our lot as far as the instructions are concerned. They look all right, the paper's a decent quality. Given the age of the kit, I doubt that it was uh, boxed recently, but it all looks uh, pretty good on the instructions side. Bathtub style hull, ejector pin marks on the inside. There's a couple of pin holes right here. Not sure what they're for, but shouldn't be too difficult to stick some card on the back and fill them. We've got cutouts so that we can see the springs as well as mounting holes for the actual uh, swing arms. And then the blocks, the bump stops, I guess you want to call them, are all pre-molded as well. You don't need to add on an extra one like you do with Academy's T3485. Um, Academy's T3485, the lower hull is the same frame as comes with the 76 models. So you do have to drill a wee hole and pop that in there, but it's easy. So don't let that put you off that kit. Another frame here, we have the back plate we got the saw. It does give you measurements for how to mount the saw. There's no um, mounting pins or anything on the back of this, kind of showing the kit's age a little bit there. These are ugly as heck, these extra moldings, but they're going on the inside, so just chopping them should be absolutely fine. You see, I was able to pop that one off with my thumb, and then hatches. The plastic, Kind of looks a bit thin in places and like it kind of trumpet or KV2-esque if you've ever built that kit. Where it kind of looks like it might fall apart in your hand. Um, whenever I show you my KV2 you'll see because I, I did a lot of plastic bending on that kit. Which was good but I broke a lot of parts trying to do it. Um, actually we'll grab this screw again because I've just realised something. This does not have the photo etch option. On the 1941 mod vid that I did, there was two of these. One of them, the grill was cut out, so you could add the photo etch if you wanted. This one doesn't have that, it's just got the solid part. To illustrate what that would look like, here's the Academy one. The Dragon Cat has one of these and one of these the same as the 1941 model. So this isn't a feature. There is no photo etch on this kit. I just realized that as I put it down. That meant to talk about it. Then we have the upper hull. We've got a few extra bits of plastic around here, but I would rather clean up those than have bits that were under molded. All the mud flaps and stuff are molded on. So you need to get a chop saw or a Dremel in and around them if you want to break them off, remove them and whatnot. We have a piece of plastic here. Um, it's got weld marks on it, uh, flame, flame cut marks, but I can't think of where that would go. It's not a feature on the World War II era ones. We have the slide molded barrel, which has eh, a bit of flash around the end. And the machine gun, the bow machine gun, which doesn't look that great to be honest. Where there should be a weld seam around the top, there's just a mess of plastic. Let's see if we can focus this. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all to be quite honest with you. But it is what it is. It's not broken necessarily. It just means you're going to have to learn to do something. And I found exhausts on here that are actually slide molded, but they're not called out in the instructions. The two part ones are called out in the instructions. So there we go. We found a mistake. So, yeah. Other than that, the sprue looks fine. It doesn't look like there's anything bent or too badly disfigured, that it can't be fixed. Here we have fuel tanks and some drive sprockets and idler wheels. Big, big plus with these is that they come pre-dented. Now, 
how you feel about that is entirely up to you, but it definitely sounds like getting them to look accurate is going to be a lot nicer with these than with perhaps Photo Etch. I've never tried a Photo Etch barrel. I, I hope to in the future, um, but I can see why this would be an easy out and it does look quite nice. Again, extra parts here on the, the tow cable hooks. But, you know, nothing, nothing that looks disastrous. Here's the older style exhaust, the two part one, which you would have to drill out even after you attach the two parts because it's filled in on both where it should be open. So don't follow the instructions for that. Have a rummage because they give you a better part that is slide molded on that one. None of these guys down here we're gonna use. I don't believe we use this machine gun. These are transmission covers which look at height. We've got a hatch with some nice spring detail on the outside and some lamp covers, headlamp covers, but I don't think we use those. It doesn't say, it doesn't have like a, the, the longer style tag that says what kit this came from, but having built a few T-34s, none of this really looks familiar. So this is A. We're going to come back to this. I'm going to check the instructions and see what it says to do with A. Okay, we've got two of these T54 slash 55 style road wheels. They do have some tread on them, but no uh, brand markings, so to speak, and not too much of a mold seam down the middle. So they won't be too hard to clean up and get looking like they've driven down a few roads. See, here's the longer tag here. This is what I was talking about. It tells you it belongs to T3485M from Dragon. And what, what frame it is. Frame A didn't tell us that. So, there you go. Turret has some casting texture on it. It's not as loud. I think is the word I've heard used to describe it as the Academy one. The Academy one is much rougher, but it would be very easy to rough up with a bit of primer, two part turret, mantlet, and then this is the rear transmission cover as well. And then a couple of toolboxes storage boxes and lights we've got the one of the lights is shielded as well that's going to be a tail light i believe for for convoying in the dark here we have some nice shiny new looking drums as well as another slide molded exhaust so that's three slide molded, two non-slide molded, and the suspensions. Suspensions come with the springs already molded. These ejector pin marks up at the top, you're not gonna see at all because they're gonna be inside the hull. So don't worry about trying to fill them. Um, there, once, once you've got all the suspension together, it's gonna look something like this. Again, this is the Academy model, it's what I've got on hand but you can barely even see the spring in there, even with the light shining on it. Uh, never mind how high up these ejector marks are gonna be. Mounts for the barrels, things like that. And then the engine, engine deck hatch. And it's a standard T34 spool. Okay, this one we've already had a look at, it's the springs and whatnot. So last frame we've got, we've got three of these. It's the tracks, they're not magic tracks or anything like that. However, all the mounting points are at the ends. So 
They shouldn't be too difficult to clean up and they don't have ejector pin marks all over the back side of them, which is good. This kit does come with ice cleats. So decide what one you want to build first and then decide if it needs ice cleats. I'm thinking that if you're in Namibia or Vietnam, ice cleats are probably, Somalia as well, ice cleats are probably not going to be near the top of your list for weight to be carrying around in your T-34 because, well, hot countries, ice probably not too much of an issue. And I don't know how well those would work in the mud. So we're going to go back. I said we would do this because we've got this A sprue right here. This is the one that I was looking at and thinking, well, what in the heck? So we're going to use part 24. Which is up at the top here, which is um, the ammo box for the whopping big 50 cal. Got a mountain bracket for it. We've got a lid for the ammo can. And then 30 and 29 look like the mounting accessories. So that answers that question about what's going to be in there. I didn't see this sprue when I was going through though. So I'm going to have to have a look and see and add that on. Last thing that we want to have a look at is the decals, which I knocked on the floor. So we've got these ones, we've got the MVA ones, as well as the numbers, they are Dragon Homebrew. Uh, I apologize for cartograph. I thought they were Dragon's own ones, but the copyright is 2016. So I think it's safe to assume that at the very least the decals have been redesigned at some point. So all looking good. I can't remember if I said these were Czech or Croatian and I don't want to offend anyone. But I know that this is NVA, but it's cartograph. Everything's going to be absolutely dandy. I did find that H frame. I'd actually uh, blitzed past it. It's up here. It's attached to an A frame and an N frame and an M frame. So I kind of pushed it aside, not realizing that I hadn't looked at it, but it's the grills that go around the engine deck for cooling, as well as the two parts, or the two main parts for the driver's hatch, which does have some very fine detail there. So we had a look at everything that's in the box. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my opinions on it. It's a dragon kit, it's a little bit of an older dragon kit, and they have a reputation for being a bit fiddly. That being said, it's a T-34, these things were built on the cheap, so they're going to have imperfections. They're going to look a little bit rough around the edges. They're going to be wells that look like they were done by a drunk child. That's just the nature of the beast. They're not, they're not over-engineered German tanks, which look like sports cars that are you know, flawless. The wells are perfect and all that. It's going to be rough. The main pro of this is that if you want to build a post-war T-3485, it comes with what you need. It's got the road wheels, it's got, you know, it's got the extra lights, it's got storage cans, things like that. You don't need to go rummaging around in other kits to get, to get those things. It doesn't have any photo etch. Later T-34 kits from Dragon do, so... I don't understand how they wouldn't be able to just add that extra piece of plastic to accommodate the louvers and the photo etch screen. I think the price for this came in about 45, 40 or $45 from Sprue Brothers. Um, so about the same price as Academy's T-3485. The only real difference being that this one's got the, the post-war things that go on it. Anyway, 
I love the T34, so I'm going to build it anyway. Whether it's got issues or not, that's just how I am. Hopefully it'll be a good one. I'll, I'll, I'll get out an after action report at least once uh, principal construction is complete, just so that you can have that opinion on it before you go and spend your hard earns on it. And it's been a pleasure having you on. I'm not gonna keep you any longer. You've got, you've got lives outside of listening to me prattle on. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. And if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, or queries about this or any of the other kits I've reviewed, do feel free to comment. And don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. Thank you. Have an excellent day. Bye-bye.